Hey everybody, this is Wes Gray over at Turnkey Analyst. Uh, my day job is a being a finance professor at Drexel University. And today we want to learn about how to calculate alpha. A lot of people ask us at Turnkey Analyst, but I don't think a lot of people actually understand the mechanics of how to actually do it. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is go step by step from data process to in-state calculations within Excel, explain how to actually generate and calculate alpha estimates. So what we're first going to do is collect some data. So I usually go to French data just in Google. That'll pull up Ken French's website. And as background, Ken French is a professor at Dartmouth and he does a lot of joint work with Eugene Fama over at the University of Chicago studying asset prices. And what they do, and it's a great public service, is they provide, provide downloadable data via their website. Now the data we're going to use today is on the, fem the Fama French factors themselves. If you're interested in details, simply click on the link and it'll explain. I'll also explain the remainder of this presentation. But click on the link and what you'll end up with is data that looks something like this. You're going to have dates, this MKT minus RF, which represents the uh, return on the value weight crisp index, which is essentially an index of all NYSE, NASDAQ, and Amex stocks, minus the risk free rate. Then you have SMB, which is a long short portfolio um, between small and big stocks, which is meant to capture exposure to small size risk. And then HML, which stands for high minus low. And this is a long short portfolio um, that's meant to capture value risk, where value is defined as book to market. So it's high book to market stocks minus low book to market stocks after controlling for size. Uh, and then obviously the risk free rate is the risk free rate. So what we first do is we get that data, and I won't bore you with the, the details on it, um, but essentially post that into a spreadsheet, which is what I've done here. Okay, so now we have our time ser monthly time series with returns on the excess market return, the SMB portfolio, and HM HML portfolio, and the RF portfolio. Okay, now we need something to test. We want to calculate alpha and see if these managers or different strategies can actually produce value. So for convenience, Again, going off of um, Ken French's website, let's just look at portfolios formed on cash flow to price. Another way to measure value and a favorite investment strategy of a lot of value investors out there. So we click on that link and we're going to get data that looks like this. And what we have here is what Ken French has done, he's done all the dirty work, is each month he has calculated the returns for a variety of portfolios that trade on stocks that have a particular measure on cash flow to price. So he breaks them down into thirds, he breaks them down into quintiles right here, and then what we're going to be using is the decile portfolios. Now what are the decile portfolios? Well, let's say it's the beginning of July 1951 and there's a thousand stocks in the universe. What we're going to do is we're going to rank all the stocks on cash flow to price and the top 100 stocks get put in the top decile. The bottom 100 stocks get put in the bottom decile. And then all we do is we simply calculate the returns to those portfolios and you do it on an ongoing basis for the remaining time. So what I do with that data is I also put that data into the spreadsheet and I'll make this available on our website but since we have the decile portfolios and their corresponding returns okay so the next thing is well how do we actually calculate some alpha well one thing to understand is the this is a equation that kinda relates it but essentially the capium theory says that the expected return on asset should be equal to the risk free rate everyone should get the risk free rate plus beta times the excess return on the market. Um, so th this is what the quote unquote fair rate of return is. Now the problem is um, just looking at return on the market and the betas with respect to that don't a lot of times capture the true risk that investors taking. They may be loading up on small stocks or they could be loading, loading up on value stocks. Um, and it's not to say that these are quote unquote risk factors 
But investing is all about opportunity costs. So if you can get these exposures for very low cost via index funds, ETFs, or dimensional fund advisors, uh, explicitly uh, slices and dices universes so you can get access to these portfolios, then you should at a minimum hold your active managers to a benchmark that controls for all these different sort of exposures that you could access for very cheaply. Because if they can't provide value above and on those beyond those exposures, then they're just charging you fees for something you could do for Okay, so so let's actually calculate some alpha. How do we go about doing it? Well Looking over here at the uh, high cash flow to price portfolio, we want to see if buying these cheap stocks has any alpha. So simply what we do is we go over to this sheet, and I've already done the analysis, but I'll walk you through it. So in this cell, what we do is we need to create an excess return series. Because as I mentioned on this equation here, all stocks earn the risk-free rate. So if you run a regression, and this is... Uh, how it's represented in, in a, as a linear function, then we know that every stock's going to automatically get risk free and that's going to show up as an intercept. So in order to make sure that intercept, we don't confuse that risk free rate for alpha, we need to move it over to the left hand side of the equation. Because then the relationship is the excess return on asset is related to beta times the market premium plus beta times size premium so on and so forth so that's why we put things in excess return format into in order to assess true alpha um, so that's what we've done here it's just the cash the return on the top decile cash flow portfolio minus the risk free rate which is in cell E right here and then obviously matched up on time and then you just simply double click that and drag the time series down and this time series in particular goes down to the end of July 2011. And everything here is in basis points. Um, and as long as it's all comparable, it's, it's not going to affect the regression. So how do we collect uh, or actually calculate alpha? Well, we simply need to do some analysis and do a regression. So we use the data analysis tool pack which is a tool within Excel that's free. Um, you may have to um, add it as an add-in. If you don't know how to do that, simply uh, Google it. Um, you click on Regression, and then we're going to regress F302 to F1022, which is our dependent variable. This is the returns on this high cash flow portfolio minus the risk-free rate. And we have some information on the VIX here from a friend of mine. So just disregard that because I'm tired of redoing this video. Um, anyways, looking down, it goes all the way as we would expect. And then the independent variables or the factors we want to use to control for the risk and or the potential risk in this high cash flow uh, to price portfolio is columns B through D. So we're going to control for, for um, exposure to the market the excess return on the market, the exposure to small caps, and exposure to value, which again, you may not believe those are quote unquote risk factors, but at a minimum, you can get those exposures cheaply um, via index funds and other means, so you should at least control for those when you're uh, assessing alpha. So we run a regression, and we get the following output. Let's analyze this. So right here, the intercept is your alpha. The X variable, this is the beta with respect to the market portfolio, minus risk free rate. This is the beta with respect to SMB. This is beta with respect to HML. Okay, and let's look at the numbers. We'll start from the bottom up. So the coefficient or the beta with respect to value is extremely it's positive and extremely significant. And that makes sense because obviously a high cash flow to price strategy uh, is has a value tilt. I mean by definition almost, so we should expect to see that. And what you also notice is this uh, training strategy also has exposure to small caps, which is measured by a positive coefficient on the S and B. So there's certainly um, elements of this strategy where it tilts towards small caps. And now the beta is a little bit greater than one, which suggests that it moves a bit more with the market, uh, all out controlling for all these other factors. Uh, which uh, at a first glance may suggest this is a bit more a bit more risky. And now the alpha is 13 basis points per month. 
So if that were the actual alpha, 13 basis points times 12 months a year, you know, that's that's a pretty nice edge. That's 1%, 2% of alpha. Any uh, pension or endowment manager or active fund manager love to have that sort of excess return. Now the question is, is it statistically significant from zero? And there, for that analysis, we can simply look at the t-stat and the p-value. So what the p-value is essentially saying is that the probability of seeing an observation like this um, based on normality and a few other assumptions is about 8%. So, you know, we, it could have been by chance, and, um, and it certainly seems to be marginally significant. So we could argue that after controlling for market size and value, that high cash flow to price you know, may have a little bit of alpha, but it's hard to say if it's any different than zero. And after fees, if a manager was, say, trying to charge you 1% or 2% on this portfolio, then it would definitely have no alpha after, after the fees are taken into account. So there you have it. It's a simple strategy of high cash flow to price stocks. doesn't seem to have any alpha after you control for size and value. Now, as a stress test, let's see if the if this thing has any alpha when you just use the plain Jane cap M analysis. So here, instead of using all three, the Fama French model, all three factors, we just want to use one. So we'll just use the market factor. And we'll run that regression. Now in this case, you get a completely different story. Here's your alpha, and here's your beta with respect to um, the market factor. So this is your standard cap M alpha. Um, and then here, you know, the beta is basically one, suggesting this thing is essentially like the market. However, the alpha is 44 basis points a month and highly significant. The probability of seeing that uh, based on normality assumptions is effectively zero. So just by changing uh, how you control for exposures, in one case, a manager can look like they have amazing alpha, and in another case, it can look like they have pretty much no alpha. Um, so if a manager comes at you with a strategy that's basically high cash flow to price, and they say, hey, look at my alpha estimate, you can say, well, you know, I want to dig a little deeper and do it on Fama French factors. And when you do that, you'll notice, well, you don't really have alpha. All you have is exposure to size and the value factor, which I can get exposure to very cheaply via index funds or any other, any number of providers out there. So if you're going to charge me a fee um, and tell me that you make this sort of alpha, I'm going to say, no, you better come back to me with a better product. Now let's test another manager out there, and I don't mean to pick on the Leg Mason Value Trust run by Bill Miller, but this is a, a typical example where you have a value manager who's an active manager picking stocks, and they like to claim alpha. Um, but when you actually dig into the returns and compare it against benchmarks that soak up the various risk exposures they're taking, what you find is they basically have no alpha. So quickly, if we just look at it, the, if you just do the brain dead strategy of high cash flow to price, um, which doesn't take a lot of active and you could easily set up the an ETF, you know, it does very well, especially relative to the value trust. Um, and now there's maybe some transaction cost issues in here because this is a fake portfolio and this is a real one. But the main point is this active manager that apparently had, um, you know, crushing the market for many years, you know, it doesn't really seem like they have alpha. But let's actually formally test it. So what I've done here is I've actually created, I've created a time series on excess returns on the Leg Mason Value Trust using their monthly returns minus the risk-free rate. And we can do the same sort of analysis we did previously. And we're going to use a different section of data here. We go from right here. This one goes all the way out a little bit further. Um, our independent factors. Just scrolling down the page here to make sure we control for the market exposure, size exposure, and value exposure. Make sure the regressions are matched up. And we run that. Now let's see what's going on here with the Leg Mason Value Trust. Here's their alpha, here's their beta with market, here's their beta with SMB, here's their beta with HML. Wow. So actually, 
these guys tend to have a folk a tilt towards bigger stocks with respect to value they have certainly have a value tip tilt which would make sense if they're a, the value trust um, their market beta is a little bit higher than um, the general market and they actually have negative alpha um, it's not significantly different from zero but it's certainly basically zero so if you were to look at the leg mason value trust and they were saying hey we want to charge you a lot of fees you'd say well why are you charging those fees because you don't really add any value uh, I can essentially replicate your portfolio and you know pay index type fees now what if we look at their returns just using the cap M? Well, let's check it out. So we come in here, and now let's not control for size and their value exposure. Let's see what happens there. So again, you typically get a lot different answers depending on the model you use, but we have a similar result right here. Here's their alpha, and here's their beta with respect to the market. So again, no alpha with this model, and now their beta is essentially about the same. So the conclusion we would draw from this simple analysis is that the Leg Mason Value Trust essentially has no alpha, whether you control just for market exposure or you, if you were to control for market exposure, size exposure, and value exposure. And in some sense, um, or so, something to be careful about is over here when we looked at the cash flow strategy you know it had 13 basis points but it was not really significantly different from zero maybe at the margin so that's essentially zero alpha likewise over here with the, the leg mason value trust sure the point estimate is negative but again it's probably not reliably negative these guys probably essentially give you market exposure but they're not adding any value above and beyond what you can just get via index funds so in conclusion, that's how you do um, alpha analysis and how you calculate the Fama French three-factor alpha and the standard cap M. I'll post this uh, spreadsheet on our website at uh, Turnkey Analyst. If you just go to the blog, I'll post the video as well as the supplementary material. And just if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments so um, other people who are interested in figuring out how to do this um, can also see the answer. And hope everyone has a great day and you go out there and calculate some alphas and determine who can provide value and who can't.